New York, you know. Yes, sir. Land of plenty and punch. The good old USA. Uncle Sam's country. Have a cigar. Compliments of Farmer J. Friends. Straight from the dollar country. <laughs> you can't fool me. You are an American. <laughs> Uh, now, Captain, what we Americans would like to know is, will the Crystal Palace make money? Money? What's that? Oh, just an old American word. <laughs> well, I hope the Crystal Palace will help do away with our poverty. Poverty? <laughs> What's that? Just an old English word. <laughs> <laughs> now, gentlemen of the press, you've come here for a story. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Right. <clears throat> now, once upon a time, there were three bears. <laughs> a big bear, a little bear, and a... <laughs> And so the Crystal Palace project was started. Gerhard spent the first few weeks playing around with a model. Yeah, the practice is very good. But these Don't sides should uh, curve a little more, and this bit here needs attention. Uh, there. Oh, you artists are always fine. <laughs> yes. Yes. <clears throat> yes. Construction on the Crystal Palace soon commenced. Hyde Park was chosen as the site. A large grassy space was cleared, despite the protests of several guardsmen and nurses. The huge steel foundation was laid, and for three days, Pure Heart never left the spot. Well, Captain, that duck. You'd better get home and get some sleep. <laughs> yes, but first we'll have to move the whole uh, uh, palace about four inches to the right. What's of a four? It's on my blasted foot. <laughs> Good. I oh, say, Captain Luke, there's a man and woman wandering about the palace. What? I say, you two, come over here. How dare you come poking around? It's all out of bounds. Who do you think you are? Your conduct is most unwritten. You ought to be ashamed of yourselves. What have you to say, eh? Young men, we are not amused. Come, Albert. <laughs> there goes my chance of a knighthood. Well, gentlemen, I must say this huge steel framework looks magnificent. Echo? Run inside, run inside, and ask them when they're going to start to uh, put in the glass. Oh, okay. Oh, Captain? Yes, Echo? It's in. <laughs> hey, excuse me, Captain. Ah, uh, yes? I'm from the LCC. Now, we want to know if you've insured the Crystal Palace. Insured the Crystal Palace? Against fire. Against fire? <laughs> Did you hear that? Who oh, ever heard of a palace made of glass and steel? Ah, uh, catching fire. <laughs> I never heard of such a thing. The palace burning. <laughs> That fanfare heralds another installment in the adventures of... That great lover of the silent screen! He also loves the talkies. <laughs> Handsome Harry Siegel. <laughs> thank you, thank you. My story starts last spring. I was holiday in Italy in a place called... Called... <laughs> Funny, I, I can't remember what the name of the town was. Anyway, one morning I stepped out of the street and... <laughs> yes, of course, it was Venice. <laughs> Luckily, I was picked out of the water by Signor Pietro Salorzo, who took me to his home. <laughs> it was nothing. Anyway, thank you, Signor. You, you saved my life. <laughs> well, we all make mistakes. <laughs> yes, I know. I saw your wife. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> now, Signor, you can do something for me. I can? Yes. You see, I am the conductor of the Orchestra di Stemponi di Milano. Uh, today we are recording symphony. We can play the beginning, but we cannot finish. Why not? Our drummer disappeared, and I want you to find him for me. Our drummer? What's his name? His name is... Hmm, unusual. Uh, not real. <laughs> no, 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 not real. In actual fact, it's... But the... is silent. How do you spell it? Spell it? Let me see. Oh, yes. You spell it. But you pronounce it. Uncle 
course, of course. Don't worry, Senor Celoso. I'll find him for you. Thank you, Mr. Chico. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> briskly across the street <laughs> to the steps of the concert hall I chanced upon a citizen loudly arguing with a captain of police the gentlemen, 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 gentlemen,
I'm back. Now, don't worry about me. I'm a soldier. And I'm going to die with my boots on. Why? I've got holes in my socks. <laughs> anyway, never fear, men. As soon as the tribesmen attack, I shall be out there shouting the Ika Tika war cry. Ika Tika! Ika Tika! What does that mean, sir? Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> Major Bloodlock, sir. Major. Long live Rue Britannia. American admirals never shall be slaves. Sure, eh? <laughs> yes, sir, though. A message just arrived. Where would this letter, sir? Right. Oh, right, sir, let me see. Quick, Scott. Oh, quick. Switch over the lights off. Wait, sir, what is it? The electricity bill. Right. <laughs> Major! Uh, yes, Ellington? I'm tired of being just a butler. I don't want to help in the fighting. Oh, splendid, Ellington. Uh, you know that bloodthirsty savage monster, Senapathy? Yes. Well, I want to volunteer to go and fight him single-handed. You do? Yes. Well, I sure hope he finds somebody. <laughs> Very well, then I shall go myself alone. Not a brave man, Bloodnock. I know, Benteen, I know. You see these medals? Yes, what did you uh, get them for? Ten bob the lot. <laughs> now, give me my gun. Stand away from the door. Goodbye, man. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, sir. Any gun? Yes, Major. Any gun? Yes, Major. For goodness sake, open this door and turn the gas down. Why? I'm in the oven. <laughs> Oh, uh, wait a minute, Major. Someone's coming. Great uh, got it, sir. Uh, the cemetery himself, sir. Now, where is this Major Bloodnock? I, Senator Patty, will kill him. Major Bloodnock? Uh, he, he ain't here. No. Then what are those feet sticking out of the oven? Oh, that, uh, that's, um, oh, that's a chicken. Oh, a chicken, eh? Oh, well, we must turn the gas up and cook it well, mustn't we? Like this. That's it, <laughs> Now, now, let me have a look inside. Ah, so, Wellington, what have you to say now? Uh, dinner is served! <laughs> and so we leave a rather browned off Major Bloodnock to stew in his own juice. <laughs> Members of the Andrew Timothy fan club will be pleased to note that old Tim is in form as usual. <laughs> Usually, at this point in the Goon Show, a long explanatory announcement is required. This week, however, we need only tell you that there follows the story of the world's greatest film. It begins quite simply with a telephone call. Hello, this is the Bank of England here. Hello, Murray. Yes? <laughs> Uh, this is Harry Chalk, I'm the film producer. I've got a smashing new idea for a film. Now, it's all about ancient Roman Nero and the lions eating the slaves. But weren't that obsessed with vegetarians? Don't be funny, they'll get eaten the same as the rest of them. <laughs> now then, Murray, will you put out the money for it? Well, that all depends on the star of the film, Mr. Chalk. You need a good dramatic actor, you know, nothing of a variety crew. Ah, don't worry about that. The geezer I've got in mind strictly for a programme. Really? Who is it? Ted Ray. I'll tell you what, I'll send my agent around to see him right away. Ah, Mr. Ray, I should, uh, well, before I say anything, could I have your autograph, please? I, <laughs> I thought your performance was wonderful, Mr. Ray. What acting? <laughs> and I, I've, always, I've always wanted your autograph. Thank you, Mr. Ray. Thank you very much. You're a good boy, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> Now, where's your father, Ted? I'll call him. Dad! Where are you, Dad? What's that you say? Where am I? Hello, boys and girls. I'm here in the back garden digging for gold and raise a lot. What? You expect to find gold in your back garden? Yes, why shouldn't I? Because... Here it comes. That's where I buried it. <laughs> In desperation, Mr. Tarkham rang up the brain, the pulse, the nerve center of British film. Hello, Hollywood. <laughs> but they were no help. There was only one thing left to do. Having scraped the bottom of the barrel with no results, he was forced to go to the bottom of the barrel itself, the BBC variety department. <laughs> Here, cop, you with the big head. <laughs> you the uh, head of the BBC? No, I'm Andrew Timothy. What? Oh, the famous home service announcer. Oh, I'm terribly sorry, sir. Oh, I really asked permission to speak, sir. Please, sir. Well, 
if you insist. Well, it's like this, that I'm, I'm making a film, you see, and I can't get any straight actors, so I'm going to use variety people, you know, comedians and all that lot, you know. Well, why don't you get hold of people like Bob Hope or Jack Benny or... What, use Americans? Use Americans when right here in the BBC there's perfectly good English comedians like Bernard Brayton, Ben Lyon, Barbara Kelly, Baby Daniel. <laughs> Baby Daniel, that's right. Finally, however, Mr. Chalkham succeeded in uh, casting the main role of this. Yes, all right. Mark E. Vinicus, or whatever his name is, you see the star part. He's a big, handsome fella, steely grey eyes and bulging with muscles and all that lot, you see. <laughs> so, my son, I think you're just a man for the part, see? Oh, thank you. And a jolly good morning to you. <laughs> yes, well, hang on a sec. You see, the, the female star's going to be Gladys Laverne. Gladys Laverne? but she's terrible. Well, I know, I know. But my wife says Gladys Laverne's got to be the star. And if my wife says Gladys Laverne's going to be the star, then Gladys Laverne's going to be the star. Uh, and who's your wife? Gladys Laverne. <laughs> yes, come next week to see Q. Barrett and the Magnificence of Nero's Palace. Hear the gentle, lilting melodies of the Roman court musicians. Contrast will be thank you. And listen to the brave war song of one gladiator as he hurls the British slave across the arena to another gladiator. Over to you. Over. See the dramatic scene in which Nero chooses one of the slave girls to be his wife. Yes, I'll take that one there with the long wavy blonde hair. Now, Jimmy, you know I only watched it last week and I can't do a thing with it, Jimmy. <laughs> On the scene where Nero sees Rome in flames and cries, <laughs> flipping kid. <laughs> or the scene in which Nero reads the letter from Hannibal and says, What is this river, this rubbish, this utter nonsense? Well, who says the next line here? Yeah, come on, Timothy, you're supposed to say, go on. I'm not an actor, I'm an announcer. The BBC only allows me to say one line. Well, take that thing. Go on, start again. Nero. All right, then. What is this dribble, this rubbish, this utter nonsense? This is the BBC Home Service. <laughs> listening for The Goon Show, a recorded program featuring Peter Sellers, Harry Seacombe, Michael Benteen and Spike Milligan, with the Ray Ellington Quartet, Max Geldry and the Stargazer. The BBC Dance Orchestra was conducted by Stanley Black, incidental music by Wally Scott. The script was written by Spike Milligan and Larry Stevens and edited by Jimmy Gruff. The program was produced by Dennis Maine Wilson. Next week, The Goon presents The Merchant of Venice, featuring... Good day to you, Mr. Shylock. <laughs>